the word drone itself kind of used to be a dirty word associated you know, with military systems in the Middle East and more and more people I've seen that drones can represent a wide variety of systems, even little ones that can be used for very good things. Yeah, really the community is generally open and acceptable to drones. I know some of them catch a lot of uh, backlash and bad media, but here we have experienced trained operators where we don't have nearly as many problems as we would elsewhere. North Dakota has turned out to be an ideal place for this industry for a couple of reasons. Number one, we have the FAA test site, the university has the nation's first UAS major, and we really have uh, the Two industries which are probably going to lead the commercialization of UAS are ag and energy, and this is an ag and energy state. The UND Aerospace has been known as the Harvard of the Air. It's the, the top aerospace school in the world and for training pilots. And it also was the first one to get out there to train UAS pilots. And just having that early knowledge and deep knowledge and high quality that it is has attracted both talent here as well as, as we've been on the leading edge of the industry. And so that is a very important part of it. I was initially trying to develop some sort of realtor cinematography type company. So a lot of people came out of the woodworks and started telling me about all these schools that are offering degrees and UND was being spoken very highly of. And what are you interested in doing after school? Initially, a dream job out of UND would be something like Google in the research and development field for unmanned aircraft systems. Hopefully moving on to something bigger like SpaceX or Blue Origin. Those companies are really dedicated to revolutionizing an industry. The companies actually are coming to the table with all sorts of different things, from everything from inspection of uh, energy infrastructure, from transmission lines to wind towers. Typically a company is good in one area and not another, but so you have the platforms, you have sensors, you have communications, you have cybersecurity, you have data collection, storage, analytics, you have the useful, you have the people of the value added such as the agronomist and the precision agriculture, after they see the data, they have to know what they're looking at, and then to get to the useful information and actionable information. What um, technology based out of here do you think is the most important for some random person in the U.S. to know about what might they hear about or might, what might impact their life? We thought that agriculture would be the early leader, but it's turned out that energy sector has been the early leader. It's been uh, the more infrastructure already available for them to have a faster entry into money and get a commercial application to inspect transmission lines, wind towers. Now the bigger market over the long term is probably still going to be precision agriculture to do early detection of stress in crops, whether that be from insects or weeds or diseases. We are a uh, small UAS company. We work in a variety of industries. We come from a very strong uh, agriculture doing uh, field health surveys and crop scans. And right now we are getting into uh, more utility-based inspections, power, oil and gas, and a variety other of local, local industries around here. So what kind of value is that providing to your customers? What were they doing in the past and what's better about this system? Uh, one of the best things I've seen working in UAS so far is right along that lines. When we were doing the, uh, the wildlife conservation there with uh, Delta Waterfowl, we went out with the thermal imager. They showed us the old method, which was a chain tied, tied behind two four-wheelers. They would go out, drag the chain, and when the duck flushed, they would go out and actually dig through the grass and find the nest. Where we, with the drone, just went out, saw the heat signature, and said, there it is. We typically sell our products to people who fly drones as a service or uh, integrate drones and then they will use them to map out a farm field, for example, to find stress spots, to help surveyors uh, identify locations within an area that they're mapping out. Gravel Yard might use the three-dimensional model that we make of the, the surface to identify how much gravel is in a pile that they're trying to measure. What are some of your big goals for the next few years for the company? So our goal is to launch our, our GeoSnap 2.0, which will do very high accuracy geotagging and down to a few centimeters, which will really help people, especially in the surveying and engineering world, take the data that's coming from our products and just allow a fully automated workflow and really enhance the usability of the type of imagery and, and 3D models that can be generated from drones.
What do you feel like are your hopes for kind of the whole industry over these next few years? What do you hope it turns into? My hope is it becomes as commonplace as using a computer at work or you know a cell phone in your daily life. We all want to accomplish the same thing in, in making our world a better place in essence. It's great for the industry right now. Um, I think probably with the 107 push, there will be a lot of small startups. So, no, it's great. Let them, let them come to Grand Forks. Well, you don't get very many times in your life when you get to start a new industry cluster and get to lead it. Uh, we're going to have not just dozens of companies, we're going to have probably hundreds of companies operating over the next 20 years in this industry. And it's going to be a fun part to help foster that.